Coach, uh, what is the latest on Matt Murray? Matt is day to day with an upper body injury. Couple things. Um, Gino skated before he shot a lot of pucks. So, do you have any idea of how close he could be to returning each day today? Uh, it's encouraging to see Flower out there practice. What do you think from him? Well, he had a real good practice today. He was sharp, tracking pucks well. Um, I, I thought he had a real solid practice. Three questions. Um, Brian Rust and yeah, I guess Rust. You expect him to be available for the series? Brian Rust is day to day as well. Okay, and how about Bo Bennett? Didn't practice today. Bo Bennett is day to day as well. <laughs> All right. Mike, I'm just curious. Is, is there such a thing as too much ice time for Chris LePang? And are you sort of do you marvel maybe the workload that he's carrying, not just in the minutes that he plays, but the type of minutes that he's playing? Um, well, if there are too many minutes, we certainly haven't hit it yet. Um, you know, for me, when I watch his performance over a long stretch of hockey here, uh, he's a big reason why this team has, has climbed back into the position that we've climbed back into. He's a very fit guy. Uh, he's a very competitive guy. Um, and certainly we rely on him at both ends of the rink. Um, you know, he's meant a lot to this club. And, you know, I think part of the what helps him, I think, handle the types of minutes that he handles is he's very efficient. He's a very good skater. It's one of his strengths. He recovers quickly. Uh, I think when you combine that with his competitive spirit, it allows him to play uh, the type of workload that we've given him. Just as a quick follow-up, has there been a game this year where you've looked at the ice time afterwards and you were like, oh, Maybe that was well, we watched we watched the ice time minutes, you know, period to period. So we, we have an idea of, of how many minutes players are playing. Um, and, and certainly, different players, in my experience of coaching guys over the years, different players can handle different types of workloads. And I think the more you get to know your players, you know what they can handle and you know what their capabilities are, and you try to put them in positions to be successful. Um, that's our job as their coaches. It's our job to get to know these guys and understand what they can handle and and, and try to make the appropriate decisions. Michelle, Coach, you've known Carl Hagelin for a long time now. How well does he fit into this you know, team both on and off the ice? And how much does he add, to obviously, to that speed identity you want to seem to have? And how crucial is he to that? I think he's fit in from day one. You know, I think he's, uh, you know, we, his skill sets are, um, very much in line with the, the identity of this group and how we want to play. Uh, I think he's, um, from day one that we, we put him in the lineup, he's, you know, he's fit into the chemistry of the group. As far as, you know, as him as a guy, I, you know, he's, a, he's just a terrific guy. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a good teammate. He's a good person. He's very low maintenance. He just comes to, comes to the rink every day and he works hard. And uh, that's what I love about him. He's a, he's a real good player. He's a very good person. He's really fit in our dressing room really well. Uh, I think his performance on the ice speaks for itself. Uh, he's, been a, he's been a real important part of our, our success here down the stretch. Like you talked a lot about playing the right way since you got here. If you're doing that, what about that do you think will translate to postseason success? Well, we've tried to define that, what that means. and. I think when you look at our group, um, when, we, when we're at our best, we use that phrase, we play the game the right way. And, and I think it always starts with the decisions that we make with the puck. And we don't become a high risk team, but we become a, we become a calculated team. I think when you look at our players, our guys want to play with the puck. They want to make plays off the rush. And, and we certainly want to encourage them to do so, but there, there are times and situations out there where there's not a lot of puck support, you don't have a lot of speed, there's not a lot of space, and, and we've got to recognize those situations and make sure that we make the appropriate decisions. When we do that, I think we're a difficult team to play against. And, and so, for me, that's where, uh, that's where it starts with our group, is, is our own puck management, because I think it sets up the rest of our game. When we, when we make the right decisions, we force teams to play goal line and goal line. And I think our, our players, to their, to their credit, have really bought in 
to uh, understanding the importance of that and playing away from the puck. You know, it's 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 hard to outscore teams in this league. You know, you, you have to outplay teams, and and the way you outplay teams is that you make good decisions, you make teams play 200 feet, and when the time comes to defend, you defend hard and diligently. And and I think our team has has bought into that idea, and we have done that down the stretch. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, it's translated into some of the results that we've got here. Is that a tough sell? Um, I don't know if it's a tough sell. I, you know, I, I think it's. Uh, I think no matter you know, you look at any sport, it's it, it's hard to win in any sport if you can't defend. And so, regardless of how how good your team is or the ability that you have to score, you have to be able to defend and keep the puck out of your net. And um, it's important as a group that we understand that. And I think our guys have bought into that idea. And I think. It starts with our leadership and, and you know our, our captains and, and it goes down from there. Those guys have really set the example for our group. They've set the standard and now it's it's our responsibility to live up to it every day. Jeff? Mike, you've mentioned a few times that the past is in the past. Um, with such recent history of this team playing the Rangers in the playoffs, is there anything worth calling upon or you sort of look at that the same way? I look at it the same way. Um, you know, one of the things that I love about this group that we have is their their commitment to uh, the short-term focus of the game in front of them. And we certainly learn from our experiences uh, in the past, but we don't dwell on them. And we don't get ahead of ourselves. And we, we make sure that we maintain that necessary short-term focus. And we... Um, we use all of our energy and our resources to try to win that game right in front of us. That's been our approach now for four or five months since since I've been here. And and I think that's what our focus is going to continue to be. Uh, we're looking at the one game in front of us. We're going to do everything in our power to win. Three more. Jeff. Mike, we've seen at times in the playoffs some of the Penguins' better players uh, get off their games a little bit when teams go after them physically. It seems like you guys have settled down. I don't know if you've addressed that specifically is when teams want to do that. You, you, wh where's the line on being emotional and physical yourself without losing losing your mind? Well, I, I think that's one of the strengths of our group right now. You know, part of, of the identity of this team is the resilience and understanding that we don't get caught up in somebody else's game, that, that we understand how we have to play the type of game that gives us the best chance to win. And regardless of what the tactics are that opponents are going to use against us to try to beat us, we can't get distracted or deterred from it. And I think uh, our team has provided a lot of evidence over the last three months um, that, that we have the ability to do that. And there's been a lot of games, uh, especially within the last month or so, that, that teams have tried different types of tactics to beat us. And what I love about this team right now is that we have that uh, that resilience or that resolve to make sure we don't get deterred or that we don't get distracted. We just keep playing. We just play. Seth? Well, two of me. Uh, Jeff Zakoff, just how has he handled being a healthy scratch or on the bench for so long? Jeff's been great. He's a, he's a real pro. You know, he comes to work every day. He gets his workload in. Um, he prepares himself to, to, to play each and every night. Um, he's been terrific. Interesting, Jerry. Uh, just how has he progressed in his first year professionally? Really well. You know, he's a, he's a good young goalie. He, he handles the puck extremely well. Uh, he's got a lot of playing time uh, this year in, in Wilkes-Barre. You know, I, I had the opportunity to see him play a fair amount the first few months when I was coaching there. He's a very good young goalie. Last one. Mike, when you guys play the right ways, you talk about it's led to really strong possession numbers. The Rangers have gotten to this point without similar possession numbers. Is there multiple right ways to play, I guess? What is it that they've done that you know, has led to similar results? I can't speak to the Rangers game, but you know, for me, my, my main, main concern is our team and how we play. And uh, I, know, I know this group and the strengths of this group, and I know that when the Pittsburgh Penguins play a certain way, that uh, we're a pretty good hockey team, and we, 
we it gives it gives us the best chance to win and have success. That's the most important point um, that we try to impress upon our players is the focus is on our group and doing everything within our power to dictate the terms out there and play the game a certain way. Thanks. Okay.